The mundane traps you. It becomes a routine of choices. A self-fulfilling route unable to stretch beyond your limits. But when everyone thinks outside the box, the outside becomes the box. Do you see the signs? Do you see the forewarnings? Things are not what they seem. Will you obey? What happens when you don't? Stop. Don't engage. Do not enter. Don't hold back. These are the rules created by people just like you. The track is filled with predetermined options. What will you do? Will you be able to pass the Criterion? You a cab driver? Yep, that's why I'm here. Just drive. I'll let you know where we're going. I'm just gonna sit up front. Yeah, be my guest. You got some uh, red stuff on your hands. Are you a artist or a painter? Uh, no, it's actually ketchup. I can be sloppy sometimes. Yeah, you know, I'm a artist myself. I mean, I don't paint, but I have a nice collection. I'd rather we not speak at all. Silence could be the best noise right now. Can you just drive off? Should let someone check this transmission. What are you saying? We are literally stuck in the middle of nowhere. The car won't move. But don't worry. I can call someone to come get you. I can't believe this is happening. Hello, Nash? Can you send someone out? Okay, 10 minutes? We'll be right here. So, I guess we just have to wait till someone comes to pick you up. Great. Hey, did you hear about the banker that killed two of his co-workers and then committed suicide two days ago? What kind of job is that stressful where you have to go out like that? I mean, these people are afraid to lose. Personally, I think they're pussies. Okay, you're bankrupt, but you know what? There are millions of people out there poorer than you that live their lives every day. You've never been rich before, have you? Yeah, I can tell. See, only a broke fool would say something like that. They had their reasons. You shouldn't question it. You've never been in that position. Stick to knowing about driving routes and shortcuts. Did you hear about the two guys that killed each other? No. Why? Well, I heard they said one was stealing. The other one confronted him, and it got ugly. One died instantly. The other made it outside, dripping in blood, and a stranger picked him up to take him to the hospital, but he died in the car. Maybe it was self-defense. Or... Maybe he had it coming for him. See, no one kills another person for no reason in a situation like that. It's not up to them to decide. You talk as if this is some kind of utopia. See, some people deserve a bullet. 
I grew up with a bunch of guys like that that I wish I could have been able to kill. I would never personally act on it. But you'd be lying to yourself if you never thought about choking someone. You know, it's only human. It happens every day. You know, someone right now is being choked to death. You ever notice that for things to run smoothly, people have to agree? And when they don't, that's when the problems occur. Interesting. So you think if everyone agrees with everyone that we'd have meta world peace? Follow along with me. 99% of accidents wouldn't occur if people would follow the rules of the road. Well, except for heart attacks or seizures while driving or failing brakes, essentially there would be no accidents. Agreements are used in other instances. We agree to a lot of things. We agree to not murder, not steal money from each other. We agree to give value to money. It's just paper, but we agree to give it value. Like, who at Wall Street decides one thing is more valuable than something else? A group of people agreeing. What does that have to do with the world running smoothly? We're basically following the thoughts of a handful of people. Like, who decided for you to ride in this car? I know it's because you need to get around, but who decided on riding in vehicles or carriages or a horse? Are you high? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Who knew I'd be on a podcast? <laughs> no, it's just me being talkative. Yes? I am here with Steve. You want me to ask him that? Seriously? Someone on the phone wants to know, did you kill Frank too? You think I'm stupid? What the hell are you asking me? Why would you ask me a question like that? It's not me. Someone told me to ask. I have no idea what you're talking about. But you know what? Thanks for the ride. I'll find my way without you. No, you can't leave yet. The game's not over. I'm gonna need you to get back in the car. just talking about an hour ago when you left in a hurry after our disagreement listen stop calling my fucking phone or I'm gonna find out where and who you are and break your fucking fingers Frank is dead I saw it with my own eyes why did you kill me Steve I didn't kill Frank okay I see what this is it's one of those little those little cop tactics listen Frank is dead, and he deserved it. He had it coming for him. Killing me was another error in your judgment. You've just failed your test. What are you talking about? Think about why you're in a car and haven't reached a destination. You never made it out. You're dead. Finally, 
Look, I need you to listen to what I have to say. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm trying to save your life. We have to leave here by 432. All you have to do is uncuff me. Everything will become clear afterwards. Hi, I'm Detective Kelly Roper. You're a suspect in connection with the homicide of two adults. One male, one female, from 260 Hamilton Avenue. It says here that you're going by the name of Janet Wesley, but we have no record of you. It wasn't me, and I didn't see who did it. You just have to trust me. I'll explain everything on the way out. <laughs> trust you? We have an anonymous 911 eyewitness account saying they saw you with the murder weapon in your hand. That's why they arrested you. So have you had your rights read to you? Do you have a lawyer? Would you like something to drink, like water or soda? You're wasting time. That same person is coming here to wipe both of us out. We have to go now. Who cares about a lawyer? Well, we're not going anywhere for the time being. So I suggest you start explaining why you had the murder weapon in your hand. Matter of fact, start from the beginning. Why were you there in the first place, Janet? I realized I was being followed as I went to the place by the same person I was there to stop. I mixed up the addresses. I was supposed to be at 107 Main Street with an E. That's where I live. I know, I was searching for you. I'm being framed. I went out front to see a couple in the window. I was confused. I didn't understand why they were there. I didn't even recognize the place. Then suddenly it clicked. I was at the wrong address. I was getting ready to leave, then out of nowhere I heard screams. So I went back to see who was screaming. I noticed the door was open. I walked through and saw them dead on the floor. Someone knocks me out, leaves me there, and then I wake up to handcuffs. So I didn't do this. Look, I am from the future. And I know you're not gonna believe me because you are known for being hard-headed. Excuse me? I suggest you stop talking right now. How are you trying to plead your case by insulting me? I guess they do things differently in the future. So I, how did you get here? Uh, telephone booth, DeLorean, hot tub? <laughs> no. I'm a part of an underground resistance group that you and Harvey joined three years from now called the Abtruse. And two years from now, the world will be completely taken over by a mind control and parasite, transferred by skin-to-skin -skin contact. It takes the appearance of anyone to essentially set a trap. And today, today is the first day the original parasite appears publicly. I know it's unbelievable, but... <laughs> You're right about that. Listen, I've heard them all in here, but a time traveler from a resistance group? Now that's a new one. I knew you wouldn't take this seriously. They constructed a time machine. She's coming here to replace you. It always happens. I'm just trying to stop it. So let me get this right. If this whole time traveler thing is real, how come you're the only one here, huh? I mean, where, where are the other people? Who else knows about this? Because it sounds like you're just making this stuff up. This wasn't, this wasn't approved by anyone. And no one knows that I am here. It's against the rules to alter your personal fate. You just had a baby, right? How'd you know that? Did you go through my garbage? No, but I know it's not with your exchange husband. It's Harvey Campbell's. He's the only person who knows that I'm here from the future. Because you are not there. You get killed today at 4.32 p.m. by a parasite. Who are you? Are you spying on me? I know everything about you because it has already happened. The parasite replaces you without anyone knowing and then she destroys the obtruse from the inside. I know this because I know this because I know your daughter. I am that baby. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. So now you're trying to tell me that you're my daughter. Now that's ridiculous. Yes, mom. I didn't want you to know it was me. I'm trying all that I can not to burst into tears when I saw you walk through that door to see you in person. I can't believe you're alive. This is why I had to tell you, I don't want to be a witness to your death. So please, believe me. You're about to receive a phone call in a minute or two. Don't pick it up. Please, do not pick it up. Who will it be? It'll be the parasite pretending to be someone else. <laughs> she kills you, takes over your life, and then replaces you. You know it's hard for me to believe anything you're saying, right? Because this just sounds ridiculous. I can't even believe I'm even entertaining this to be factual. Besides, my phone rings all the time. Actually, there it is now. Don't pick it up, please, you're making a mistake. Please, don't pick it up. Whatever, hello? Who is this? <laughs> oh.
Oh, so you're a time traveler also. This is a silly game. And both of you are telling me not to trust the other. So why don't you come down to the 25th precinct and help clear up the murder of the Martins? Got it? Look, Janet, no more diversions. You're looking at 25 years here. But if you give me something, it can only help your situation. So was it self-defense? And this Harvey person, where is he? Harvey's in an abandoned casino in Yonkers. We can go there now, it's not too late. We still have time to leave. Look, once she's here, there's nothing we can do. Let me tell you what I think happened. The Martins were in the living room watching TV. You saw an open window, went through it, saw Mr. Martin putting away the dishes. Blam! You hit him in the back of the head with a hammer. Blood splats Wait, everywhere. No. Getting on the door, the floor, and on you. You trail no. the blood through the house where you come across Mrs. Martin. She screams, dials 911, and as she's running, you grab her by the shirt, choke her. No. She scratches happened. and claws until she's motionless. You leave her there on the floor next to the couch. The 911 operator hears everything and sends squad cars to the house in under four minutes. Did I get it right? Luckily, Kelly was off today. I had to come here to see how many people knew about me. Thanks for the confirmation. Now I know where Harvey is, too. Which one of you were playing with my phone? What you want, but let me go. Help! I don't want to die. No one can hear you down here, okay? And you're being dramatic. No one wants to kill you. Listen, do well on this test number, and you'll be closer to going home. Test? I'll do whatever you want. Just let me go. Good. Can you move this? I don't know if you noticed, but my, my hands are tied at the moment. <laughs> Silly me. I mean, move this with your mind. I can't do that. Why do you think I can do that? I don't know who you think you are, but... You got the wrong guy. Fine. Let us start. As a control, what's your full name and where are you from? Grant Williams. I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Now tell me your real name, Vince. I'm sorry. I just wanted to confirm that your first instinct is still to lie. You do that every time. Still? How do you know me? Vince Ellington. Born and lives in Buffalo, New York. 28 years old, a postal worker for six years. No other living blood relatives besides your son from your current marriage with Miranda. Is this true? It's all true. What did you put in my head? You have a little implant to monitor your progress and other things. You cannot and will not leave until we're finished. Do you understand, Mr. Ellington? I understand. Good. How old is your son? 13 months. A newborn. Congratulations. Yes. My father. 
I want to be there for my child when he gets older. <laughs> Are you really going to pull that crap on me? You watch way too many motion pictures. <laughs> Is it September 24th? Yes. Can you move this now? I told you. I, I can't do that. What do you fear the most? It's an obvious answer. I fear something happened to my son and Miranda. What if you had to choose one? Your son or your wife? I'm not answering that. Please don't make me answer that. I can't. You know what? I have a bunch of questions. But I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go straight to the end. I'm getting hungry. Alright, it's late at night around this time. A male and a female are tied up. The male is in the back seat without a seatbelt in one car, and the female is tied to the hood of another car. The cars are going 80 miles per hour and are on the collision course with each other. Who do you save? The male in the back seat without the seatbelt, or the woman tied to the hood of the car? I guess I would save the woman on the hood. Being in the car seems more safe. What if I told you it was a baby in the back seat and an adult tied to the hood of the car? Would that change your choice? I'd save the baby. Hold on a sec. He said save his baby. Wait, 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 wait. What did he just do? You're smart enough to know what's going on here, Vince. You can put her on now. Hello? Hello? Miranda? What do you want from me? I swear, if you hurt any of them... Save Steven! I wouldn't be the person hurting anyone. You could save them both by moving this with your mind. And end it all. I can't do that! All you have to do is move this. This is the last part. We just got here quicker. I've never seen your eyes change like that before. Let, let go, go. What are you doing to me? This is not real! Stop! Stop! It's just, just a, a test. test! It's, it's just, just a test! test. It's not real! Miranda, where are you and Steven? Are you okay? Finally, test number 14 is a success. There is no Steven, I'm not Miranda, and you're not Vince. We implanted memories of a family, so we can propel this experiment to the next level. I don't believe you. Fortunately, you committed your first kill. Unfortunately, I have to hire a new staff member. We won't erase your memory entirely. We need to see how you reacted with your new memories. I need to study your frequencies. Just tell me where my family is. Have you ever heard of the Sorieties of the Paradox? Of course you wouldn't know what that means. If you see a heap and take away a grain, it is still a heap. If you continue to take away the grains, is it still a heap? See, what I'm trying to say to you is, is how much can we take away from your brain to transform you into something else? Something that I could use. I can't move. Oh, you won't be able to go. There's a fail-safe after the eighth time you try to exit that door. Stop! So you are in the building.